Chapter 1. Abandoned Year 1504. Dadan's Home, Mount Kalubo, Dawn Island, East Blue. A baby who was born just two days ago was silently put down near the main door of the Band of Bandits, which was led by the famous Curly Don of Mount Kalubo. The young baby in the basket made of straws looked cute, had big pearly eyes with natural black hair. The baby was surprisingly quiet and didn't utter a single word as a person whose face was hidden in the darkness of the night. The man had put the baby near the door and left quietly, the same way as he came. It was late at night, so none of the bandits heard him. It could be said that the bandits weren't very good. Even the person who was responsible for the security at night was also sleeping while snoring. Now if one looked closely at the baby, they would notice that the baby had a face which expressed confusion and curiosity as his eyes were trying to look around. The baby wasn't crying at all and was just looking around with his eyes. He wasn't strong enough to move his limbs the way he wanted to, so all he could do was move his eyes. Of course, the baby was special. The baby who had just been born two days ago was confused because he didn't understand where he was. Now the question was how come a baby could have such thoughts? It was simple. It's because the baby had gone through the famous process of transmigration. From the moment he became conscious, he knew that he had come to this new world. What happened? Wasn't I just sleeping on my bed? How did I just get born in a new place? There was no truck-kun, no scooter-chan, nothing. And now, don't even know where the fuck am I, ah. My parents would surely be heartbroken, seeing that their son was dead. These were the random thoughts that filled his mind when he was just being born. In his previous life, he wasn't much of an achiever, but it couldn't be said that he had led a bad life. He completed his studies with good grades, even had a girlfriend at one point, though it ended very badly. But all in all, he lived a contented life. He had his close group of friends on whom he could trust, loving parents, and a respectable job. Though he was introverted and didn't like to go out of his room, he never saw this as a bad thing or that he needed to change his habits. He was happy and content with his life. Anime, movies, manga, novels, he had everything to fill his life with. And now here he was. Suddenly, he was pushed to a new life which he had no idea about. Forget about accepting his new life, he broke down in tears thinking of his previous life. And soon the baby who had just been born cried. But the cry was special. It wasn't a loud one as baby normally cries, but a soft one with almost no sound as tears fell from the baby's eyes. The person who had just delivered the baby was in shock as he had never seen a baby crying silently. Makes, Banks. The baby who had been crying softly for a few minutes finally stopped and looked at the surroundings. After calming himself down, he looked at the surroundings. The doctor and a man who was looking at him with concern. Fuck, I can't even understand the language. But why does the language seem so familiar? The thought of transmigration still hadn't settled well with him, and he was still taking time to absorb the sudden change. His panic mode made him think of random things right now, and all the cries from his eyes made him feel sleepy, and the baby just closed his eyes. Gaff's YQ When the baby awakened again, he saw that the surroundings had changed and he was in a small room. He could hear the whispers of Aman and woman talking beside. Tam hungry. I need to eat something. No, I need to have milk. Fuck no teeth. This is annoying as fuck. I can't have solid food for such a long time. As the baby thought of this, he tried to attract the attention of the couple by making random sounds that his voice box allowed. And soon the woman came forward and looked at the child. She soon brought a glass of milk and stuck the bottle to the mouth of the baby. Thank God, I didn't get shoved onto the teats of the woman. That would have been very embarrassing. The baby thought as he sucked off the milk from the bottle. The milk tasted a little different from the ordinary. The couple had again started talking among them in whispers. The baby finally understood why he felt like he had heard the language before. He had heard the language countless times before. Though he couldn't understand it, he sure as hell was accustomed to it. It was Japanese. Fuck Japanese. I need to learn kanji and hiragana. My JLPT was only the lowest level, and I don't even remember what I learnt. Fuck. By the way, was I reborn in Japan in a different time period? 
The house seems to have a totally different vibe from the time I was in my home. Sigh. I will have to learn the language, it seems, and get a hold of the things around as fast as possible. But little did the bay know that fate had a totally different plan about him. And after two days of living at the couple's home, one fine night under the cries of the woman he was, was taken away by the man and left on the doorsteps of a home in the middle of a forest, which was on a mountain. The baby was awake the whole journey. He was confused at first, but after the man had left him on the door of the house, he finally understood what had happened. He was being abandoned. Chapter 2. Harry Potter The last two days had been very stormy for Ken. Ken was the name of the baby in his previous life. Most of the time, he was forced to sleep, and when he used to wake up he had to drink his milk. It was still very difficult for him to understand and even process the fact that he had been transmigrated to a different world. A major part of life he spent reading Asakai novels and even watching some of the Isekai animes. The Slime OP anime was his favorite among that genre, but never in his life did he expect that he would be one of them. Those novels were real? Does that mean the person who first introduced that genre was an isekai person himself, and that was where he got his idea of writing a novel that had isekai? Ken was having those random thoughts whenever he woke up. Slowly it was settling on him that he had been transmigrated. He missed his parents, his friends, and even his boss, who had been good to him, as opposed to asshole bosses most people tend to get. What kind of world is this? From what I can see, the technology isn't much advanced, and the people here don't seem to know magic or something of that sort. I hope there is some hope for me. If there is magic, I could go and see if I can ever leave this planet and look for my Earth. I hope there will be power and technology to help me achieve that. Ken was daydreaming of many things and hoped that the circumstances would be suitable enough for him to leave the planet and search for his Earth. Only that thought gave him hope and aspiration. But everything changed after two days when he was left on the door of a house in a jungle. Ken was devastated at first when he saw the person who was supposed to be his father leaving him. But then he remembered, it's not like I treat him as my father, though I feel bad for the mother here. She is probably very upset, but since they took that decision, they will have to live with it. I guess I am Harry Potter now. I wonder if I will have to live under the stairs like the boy in the glasses did. With those thoughts, he again fell asleep. He didn't have much attachment to his new parents anyways, and though he felt bad that he was abandoned now, he didn't give much thought to it. But he was feeling a little uncomfortable, because he had no idea of who lived in this new house and how they would treat him. If he was treated like Harry Potter, that would be called the best circumstances. Anything worse wouldn't allow his tiny body to survive. Next day, Ken woke up when the sun was almost overhead outside. He had woken up for two reasons. One, he was terribly hungry, and second, there was too much noise around. Who the hell makes so much noise in the early morning? Ken almost burst out when he opened his eyes. He was annoyed that someone disturbed his sleep, totally forgetting the fact that even without the noise around he would have woken up anyways. He tried to speak these words out loud, but all the people heard around was goo goo, ga ga ga, and ga wah, bro. Ken, after the first outburst of anger, looked at the people who had been making so much noise. What is this place? So many men? Am I in a gigolo house? Eh, why do these people seem familiar? Ken was looking closely at the faces of these men who were wearing outfits that looked like a uniform. But the uniform wasn't standard like a pair of pants and suit, but rather white-colored dress with puffy pants and even a turban on their heads like the ones Arabs used to wear. Though there were striking differences, the men around looked like ancient Arabs who used to live in tribes. Ken was sure that he hadn't gone back in time as he saw what his parents used to wear, and they weren't living in the desert, so he didn't understand why these people had weird outfits and the feeling that he had seen them somewhere before. As he was thinking of all this, from the corner of his eye, he saw a huge woman who seemed obviously overweight came inside from the door of the room. The woman had long hair, but her hair was orange in color and it wo as curly. She had a wide mouth, and he could see her white teeth 
and lips that were colored in dark maroon, and there was a small white cigarette between her teeth. At first Ken thought he was imagining things looking at the weird woman in front of him. He had to wipe his eyes with his tiny eyes to make sure what he was seeing was absolutely true. After a proper wipe on his eyes, he opened his eyes wide and looked at the figure. Ken's mouth would have fallen on the floor if that was possible, not because he was disgusted by the overweight woman or by the weird lipstick she was using. Ken never judged a person by weight or makeup, but by the fact that Ken knew her. Ken had seen her countless times in his previous life. He had seen her in the anime that he loved and adored. Curly Don! One Piece. Ken was dumbfounded and shaken. Now he understood why the people around were so familiar to him. These were bandits of Mount Kalubo of the Dawn Island. This was the place where Luffy and Ace grew up. Even Sabo was here for quite a lot of time. For a major part of his life, he had followed One Piece, and now he was here. Was it really the world of One Piece, or was he just dreaming? Chapter 3. Baby. Maybe he was dreaming. Maybe this wasn't a dream, and maybe this was just a figment of his imagination. The huge woman came towards the small basket on which he was still lying and picked Ken in her arms. Surprisingly, her huge muscular arms seemed soft the moment she brought him up. She even flicked away the cigarette that was on her teeth to the other side of the room with her mouth. At first, Ken got scared. Her strength might just crush him, but surprisingly, he was fine. Woman, that cigarette better not cause a fire hazard to the house, or else we would have to live among the mosquitoes. Ken heard her saying something which he didn't understand, but among the words that came out of her mouth was ace. At that point, he was sure. This was really the One Piece world, and her mentioning Ace with good emotions meant that he was still alive. He just wasn't sure on which year he was shoved into the hands of these bandits. Has Luffy started his journey, or was there still time? Will I get to see Sabo, or is it still a daydream? All those thoughts made him excited, but then the hunger hit his train of thoughts, like the sea train of Water 7. This made Ken cry. But apparently, his first cry was enough for a call, as a big bottle of milk was shoved down his mouth soon from which he started sucking. The milk brought him calmness again, as he could again go through his thoughts that he had been thinking. Of course, at first he needed to finish the milk. The milk tasted different to him than the typical milk he used to have in his previous life. More tasty, and definitely more fulfilling. This world is just built differently. The food here is definitely more nutritious than my world ever was. There must be a reason why the people are just stronger than typical humans. Ken was having all these thoughts as he was put back into the basket again. Dedan ordered in her own language and spoke of something to her subordinates. Soon, the bandits left, and it was Ken all alone in the room, made of wooden walls and floors. Ken was still finding it hard to believe that he was in One Piece world, but two days ago, he accepted the fact that he was in a different world. Now he had to accept that this world was from One Piece. At least, he will have a good grasp of the normal happenings of this world and would have a better time navigating. All he needed to do now was to find out which period of time this was. Accordingly, he needed to make plans and act. And the answer to his burning question came fast and in a very weird way. As he had finished drinking the milk, from the corner of his eyes, he saw a young baby who looked one or two years old walking towards him with a small pace. His eyes had curiosity as he stepped slowly on the wooden floor very carefully, as if making sure that nobody would ever know that he had stepped inside the room. Ken's eyes went wide the moment he saw the baby up close. If he couldn't recognize the baby, then everyone would call him a fool. The baby that just walked up to him was Ace. The baby version of Ace. He could recognize him because he had seen his face in the movie Strong World as Garp had visited the baby Ace when Shiki fled and fell down. Even if one didn't watch that movie, he or she would still recognize the iconic face of Porcus D. Ace. Ken almost had tears in his eyes seeing him in real life. He remembered how he had tears in his eyes when he saw him die. Such emotions were rare for Ken. Only a few scenes from anime could invoke such emotions in his heart and mind. All those memories came rushing towards him in an instant. Seeing Ken was almost on the verge of tears, 
Ace suddenly picked up his pace and put his own finger on his lips, indicating the baby to keep silent. Shh. This made Ken surprised, and then he let out a giggle. He was surprised by the sudden movement of Ace and his fear of Dadan, who apparently had stopped him from visiting him. But it didn't matter to Ken. He was laughing heartily, seeing the works of Ace. After laughing for a few seconds, he cal med down. The answer to the year of his birth was here. He was one or two years younger to Ace, which meant that was still a long time for the wheels of time to turn into the era which would change the world forever. And in this small island, he could easily gather power and strength in order to survive the upcoming era. But first, he needed to learn the language of this world. What is up with this world? They use English letters in wanted posters, but use Japanese language to speak. Or are the wanted posters different for the Japanese version of the anime? Ah, whatever. I hope my baby brain will be smart enough to learn the language. My inclusion in this world soon throws tremors into the distant future. I need to make sure that the butterfly effect I am causing is not strong enough. May Luffy really arrive here soon after his encounter with Shanks, or else it would be a disaster in many parts, and I don't want to see Luffy forced to be a Marine. Ken became self-aware as he had to make sure that his butterfly effect wouldn't cause huge changes, and he would have to make sure that the initial development of the characters of the three brothers. Sabo was an important member of the group, and Ace needed to meet Sabo, no matter what. The young baby Ken, who couldn't even walk, had already started planning his future, and he was looking forward to the adventures he would have to go through soon. Chapter 4 Grandpa Ken was hardly awake for more than one hour while he played with the curious Ace for a bit. He was intrigued by the new specimen that had just arrived, and he seemed happy that he had a new friend who would soon be his friend. But little did he know that this young baby would be totally different from what the young Ace was wishing for. Ken then continued spending his days with the bandits. Contrary to the times Luffy lived with Dadan, the bandits provided all the food and nutrition a baby would require to live through for both Ace and Ken. This surprised Ken as he remembered that Luffy and his brothers were the ones who used to bring food on a daily basis and the bandits used to eat from that. Dadan had even said she will only provide one meal once a day to Luffy. Dadan was really a kind-hearted woman who treated Ace badly. Thank God, Ken thought. He was passing his days as beautifully as ever and never cried, not that Dadan gave any reasons to cry. Only thing that irritated Ken was the fight for food every night and partying whenever they got a chance. Ken was never a party guy, and that too a party where everybody was shouting, yelling, and singing kind of cringed him out. Though it was kind of unique to his character, and it hampered his sleep too. But complaining about this would only fall into deaf ears. So after crying for the first few times, he accepted it forcefully later. Can't wait to grow up and build a separate home for myself. I should learn survival skills and how to make a home. Though it was boring for Ken without his mobile and his typical life, it was good that he was sleeping day in and day out. Meanwhile, an interesting thing happened when he was passing his life with the bandits. One day, Garp showed up to have a look at his grandson. And when he saw a new baby in the house, he was taken aback. An EA sent, whose baby is this? Ken had been trying to understand the Japanese language every day, and finally he had some grasp on it, thanks to his baby brain. Though he was still far away from the real deal, at least he could understand the general trend of the conversation. On the door. Garp then looked at Ken for a few seconds again, and then asked Don. What is the name have you given to this kid? And, and a no, there were no, no. All right, from today onwards, you will be named Mac. Garp said. Surprisingly, Ken understood the whole sentence, and the new name made him instantly angry. His full name was Kenny in his previous life, but everyone called him Ken. He loved his short name, and in no way he was going to change his name to a typical name like Mac. It was not even a Japanese name, for God's sake. Ken instantly showed an angered face and made such an expression that it was apparent that he didn't like that name. This sudden change of behavior surprised Garp and others. Ken was just a baby, and he shouldn't understand what they were speaking. Forget about expressing discontent with a name. 
You don't like the name? Ken moved his head sideways to express his thoughts. E-A-K. And Sebastian? Ta! Anthony? Kenny? Hi. The weird exchange between Ken and Garp was noticed by everyone with wide eyes. They just saw an old man and a baby that was just born a few months ago interact like they had known each other since ages. Was this even possible? What was up with this duo? Yosh, from today you are Kenny, Garp said. Ken looked happy with the proclamation, as Ken finally had a name, as Don had just been calling him by random Japanese words. Ah, such a lovely kid. Ah. My grandson. Am I? Nani? Ken was taken aback by the reaction of the bandits as he didn't understand what Garp meant and he had a confused face. Garp lifted Ken up and took him in his arms, and after Garp made it clear did he understand what had happened, he just got adopted by Garp as his grandson, just like Ace. Don was still not over the fact that Ken and Garp could even interact, and now this fell on their shoulders. Ken didn't know what he would do with this new designation that just got attached to his resume. Ken, grandson of marine hero Garp. He was ecstatic inside thinking he finally had a family. Though the bandits were still his new family, he could still feel some indifference from the bandits, as everyone was not like Don. But Garp was different. He would finally have someone that he could call his own. He felt a little lonely while being a baby, thinking there was nobody to call his own yet. Now at least, he had a grandpa. Garp and Ken looked happy as they looked at each other. Ken gave a wide face while Garp showed his teeth to Ken. Both seemed like they understood each other. It was still a miracle of how Garp was okay with Ken able to understand him and show the expressions that were not possible for a young baby. Dedan didn't want to spend much time on this and invited Garp to spend some time with them, which Garp happily obliged. Ken and Ace spent a week with Garp as he showed the island around and even took them to the kingdom to have a sightseeing. Ken was taking everything in as he could and looked around. Being with Garp made him understand how much Garp loved both Ace and himself. Though Ken was just randomly added to the group suddenly, there were no differences between his love for the two younglings. The vacation soon ended for Garp and he left for his work soon. Ken and Ace bade their goodbye to Garp while Donan sighed in relief. She always felt she was living in danger whenever Garp used to come by. Chapter 5 Sorry Sorry For no chapters for the last few days. I am down with COVID and dengue at the same time. Dengue is a surprising one that came out today, as I am actually very particular about making my room mosquito-proof, but it is what it is. Hope to survive and live. I wish to continue this, as I have grand plans for this story. Chapter 6 Advent of the System This new grandson of mine is anything but normal. Garp thought as he stepped on the deck of the naval ship that had arrived to pick him up from his vacation. He was very much happy to gain another grandson, but he was also intrigued about him. Though he acted normal when the baby talked with him, he was shocked inside. In all the years in the sea, he had never seen such an intelligent baby. The baby never cried. Whenever the baby needed food or other help, he would intelligently point it out. He could also see that the baby was trying to understand their speech as fast as possible. Everything about this baby was screaming adult rather than a baby. Whatever. He looks so cute, just like Ace. Sengoku will be jealous. With those thoughts in his mind, he sat on his reclining chair on the deck and went to sleep while the naval ship sailed on its way to the headquarters. Ken and Ace were left to the care of Dadan, and thus their life entered the monotonous phase. Well, it was monotonous for Ken. Ace, who could walk, was already having a blast roaming the house and going out for small adventures nearby. Ken struggled with his boredom, but there was nothing he could do. In this way, ten more months passed away, and one fine day, Ken became the Chapter 6, Advent of the System. This new grandson of mine is anything but normal. Garp thought as he stepped on the deck of the naval ship that had arrived to pick him up from his vacation. He was very much happy to gain another grandson, but he was also intrigued about him. Though he acted normal when the baby talked with him, he was shocked inside. In all the years in the sea, he had never seen such an intelligent baby. The baby never cried. Whenever the baby needed food or other help, he would intelligently point it out. 
He could also see that the baby was trying to understand their speech as fast as possible. Everything about this baby was screaming adult rather than a baby. Whatever. He looks so cute, just like Ace. Sengoku will be jealous. With those thoughts in his mind, he sat on his reclining chair on the deck and went to sleep while the naval ship sailed on its way to the headquarters. Ken and Ace were left to the care of Dadan, and thus their life entered the monotonous phase. Well, it was monotonous for Ken. Ace, who could walk, was already having a blast roaming the house and going out for small adventures nearby. Ken struggled with his boredom, but there was nothing he could do. In this way, ten more months passed away, and one fine day, Ken became the happiest person in the family. Why do you ask? Well, he finally learned to walk again. But that was not the only reason he was happy. He was in the ninth cloud just because of the fact that he heard something which he thought was impossible. The standard system that every transmigrator should get once they cross over. Well, at least, that was the belief Ken had when he came here. After the first few months, he had given up hope that he would even get any kind of help. He was devastated inside because he felt he wouldn't amount to much if he didn't have a plug-in. Ken had a good idea of how cruel and broken this world was and how badly he needed power, and now finally he had the help he had dreamt of. The others who saw him having a huge smile on his face as he took his first steps were also happy, especially Dadden. She had a huge smile, and in order to celebrate, he put six cigarettes on her mouth together to smoke. Ace, too, was happy to see the young brother of his taking his first steps. He could now talk for a bit and understand what others were saying. While all this was happening, Ken took some more steps and reached the chair to sit on it. He needed to check the system. The others, after a small celebration, went on to their work as they usually did. After Ace saw that Ken was not ready to take another step with him, left too, to look around the house and search for interesting things. Ken was relieved to see that everyone was gone and he could finally check his system in peace. He was willing to open the system in his mind and soon he heard the prompt that he had heard when he took his first step. Welcome to the life simulator system. Simulator system? Sounds generic. I think I read some novels using this system before. What is the main function of the system? Ken asked in his mind. The life simulator system gives the host and his friends a chance to live another life from another world. It could be any random world in the multiverse. The person would gain powers or knowledge depending on the life he had lived. After completing 100% of the power accumulation and knowledge in the real world, the host or his friends would get another chance to live another life in the system, and this process would continue. What? Live another life? Are you serious? I thought the simulator would allow me to live in the future. But it's another life. This is good. If I could live the life of Saitama, then it would be game over for the people of this world. Ken was already daydreaming after hearing the first explanation of the system. He knew that any kind of simulator would be powerful, but he didn't expect that he would get to live the life of another life. Wait, if I live another life, wouldn't I be affected psychologically? as I have lived a lawn, g time in the body of another person. Rest assured, host, the side effects would be taken care of by the system and would even make sure that the core memories aren't being tampered with and there is no effect psychologically. Of course, if the host or his friends would like to take inspiration from the lives he or she had lived, then it is up to the person. There is nothing the system could do. That is of course. Wait. If I live the life of another person with the help of the system, wouldn't time be a problem with living in the real world? Ken asked, as he could already imagine him living a life in a different place while being absent in the real world. When the host or his friends live a life in the system, the real world would only experience a passage of one sec completion, so rest assured the host about living the life. So only one sec will pass in the real world. That's good. That's good. System, can I have my first life now? Of course, host. You have taken the first step, so you are already eligible to live the first life. But the system will remind the host that the percentage of completion and gaining powers in real life would solely depend on the host. And only after 100% completion can a person live another life. 
Yes, yes, whatever. Just let me live another life. Chapter 7. Lightning. Simulating. Life chosen. Good luck to you, host. There were many questions that Ken would have liked to ask before entering the simulation, but he was so excited that he had forgotten about them, and thus he just entered to enjoy the first life. When Ken opened his eyes, he saw that he was on a bed lying down, and after a few seconds of pause, he realized that he was a baby again. Fuck a baby again. What is up with this baby shit? Ken thought. He didn't like the fact that he was a baby again, but that was not the highlight of the whole problem he was facing at the moment. The main thing was that he wasn't in control of his body. System, what is going on? Why can't I control my body? Even though I am small, I should be able to control my hands and legs. Ken was confused, so he asked. Host, the system will allow to live a second life, not control the second life. Any person who enters the simulation will lead life by living as the third perspective. You will have no control over your body and thoughts, and thus you can see the world only from the eyes of the person you are living and nothing else. What? What the fuck? I can't control the body. This is fucked up. I don't want to live the life of another person. Ken was on the verge of tears internally. He wanted to cry, but his body wouldn't even allow him to cry. He would have to endure it deep inside and live life. Host, some sacrifices have to be made in order to gain power. Shut up. I don't want to hear life lessons right now from a heartless system. As Ken and the system were arguing, the baby who was sleeping was brought to the arms of Amon. The man wore a golden armor and a helmet which had golden horns. Ken was looking at him from the baby's perspective. T have seen that helmet somewhere, and why does the face look so familiar? Ken thought as he looked at his prospective father. He was feeling this for some time, and he soon realized why it was the case when the man opened his mouth. My second-born son, you will be called Thor, son of Odin, the mane with the beard said, as he put his hands high in the air, holding the baby, and showed it to others who were at the chamber. Listening to the words of the man, Ken instantly came to the realization of what kind of world it was. Marvel. Now the question was which universe Marvel? MCU or some other universe. Since he had known that he would live the life of another person from the start, he had already expected a life which was known to him from before. It was just that he didn't expect himself to live the life of a prince, Thor Odinson, one of the most powerful beings of Marvel, both in comics and in the movies. Though, later they showed him dumb, but it never changed the fact that he was powerful, especially with his Stormbreaker. He could travel worlds with Stormbreaker. That in itself was broken. But right now, Ken was thinking something else, and that was the most crucial question for Ken. He would have to live this goddamn life for thousands of years. This would be a huge torture for Ken as a human being. His previous life was only 21 years of age, and in the One Piece world, he had only lived for a few months. But here he was. As Thor, he would have to endure for thousands of years, and there was nothing he could do. And thus, from that point on, the boring life of Ken started. It was excruciating for Ken in the beginning, but soon he got used to it, thanks to the system as it allowed him not to be affected psychologically as it had promised before. Ken started seeing the world from the eyes of Thor. He was a bully from the beginning, and he saw he bullied his brother Loki. He could see the resentment in the eyes of Loki as he grew up, but he also saw the love Thor had for his brother and his parents. As he grew up, Ken understood that the world was MCU, and Ken was ecstatic knowing this. Ken was knowledgeable in the stories of comics, but he wasn't as thorough as the movies. System, can I get the things which belong to me from the simulation? Yes, host, you can bar. Inging the things that once belonged to you in the past, or things which you have made before, to real life. For example, if you have lived the life of Clint Barton, a.k.a. Hawkeye, you would be able to bring the bows and arrows from the system after you completed the simulation, irrespective of the completion you have achieved in real life. Cool. That means both Stormbreaker and Mjolnir would be mine once I go out. Mjolnir would be effective on anyone, even Kaido once I bring it out in real life. Ken was daydreaming already as he thought of the things that he could do with the help of Mjolnir and Stormbreaker. Days went by, months went by, years went by. 
Everything went by fast, as continued living his life as Thor, and after a long time when Thor adopted the daughter of Gore, did the simulation come to an end. He had seen himself fighting so many things in his life. Loki, the Dark Elves, his own sister, and even Thanos. In this life, he had tried learning everything that he could. The art of fighting, Thor's unique control of lightning, it wasn't anything like Enel, but at least it was something, and after a long time, Ken was thrown out of the simulation. When he opened his eyes, Ken found himself sitting in the same chair that he had once sat when he entered the system for the first time. Chapter 8. Words Ken after coming back to the world, he checked his system. And there it was, his completion rate. Thor character completion, 45%. 45%, that's not bad. System, give me both Mjolnir and Stormbreaker, Ken ordered. Of course, host. But it is advisable not to use the Stormbreaker now, as you have only completed 45% of the character. Your body might be able to lift Stormbreaker, but in course of time, your mind might lead to insanity, as it is a king's weapon and you are not eligible to wield that power yet. What the hell? That weapon was made for Thor anyways, and I am Thor in another sense, as I will be progressing towards completion. Why can't I use it? Ken was confused and angry. He was looking forward to using Stormbreaker and Mjolnir as both his personal weapons, but he already encountered a roadblock. Host, you are not Thor. You are just possessing the power of Thor, and that too which hasn't been completed to the full. Ken could easily discern the sarcasm of the system in those words, but he also understood that some things would take time to gain. But it was fine, he had Mjolnir, and that was enough. Ken opened his eyes to search for Mjolnir, not realizing that the hammer was already in his hand. It was big for his size, but miraculously, Ken didn't feel the weight at all. He felt like he was holding a small toy that he could easily play around with. Whosoever be worthy shall possess the power of Thor. Ken thought of those words in his mind. He was ecstatic as he could feel the lightning coursing through his veins. He could already feel his baby hands and feet were more powerful than they were. Ken tried using lightning without the hammer, and he could see small sparks flying in the fingertips. System, will I be able to use hockey now that I have the bloodline of Odin? Ken asked the question, as that was one of his main concern. Rest assured, host, your base physique still belongs to the One Piece world, and the basic things will follow the laws of this world. Good. Now all I have to do is make some progress in the character and get my Stormbreaker and also keep a low profile until Luffy arrives. Ken thought, but it was easier said than done. Though he could walk now, he couldn't do much. In order to hide the hammer, Ken used rudimentary magic that he had learnt from Asgard to change the hammer to an umbrella, just like Thor did during his meeting with Doctor Strange, and kept the hammer on the side of the house. Nobody paid attention to it. Ken and Ace were living a normal life. The only abnormal thing in the whole house was the detachment Ken showed to the surroundings. He didn't use to go out like Ace, nor use to cause mayhem in the house. In fact, Ken was happy to help the bandits in keeping the house clean. Meanwhile, Ace was not at all indulgent in these kinds of petty things and had his own life. He started going out more. In the beginning, he had tried convincing Ken to follow him and have some fun around, but Ken always declined. Even Dadan hinted that Ken should go out and play, but he always denied. Why should I go out? I am more powerful than most of the people here, and if I really want, I can fight you all and still beat the shit out of you. Ace needs to meet Sabo, and I need to stay the fuck away until Luffy arrives. And after that, heh. Those were the thoughts of Ken as he lived his own small life. But as days went by, Ken started to see the resentment in Ace's eyes. The resentment for his father. Ace could feel that he was treated a little differently by the bandits. Even Dodden had a little different eye when it came to Ace and Ken could also feel it. All the bandits here knew that Ace was the son of Gold D. Roger, and thus Ace could understand from the very beginning that he was different. Few years went by as Ace and Ken had grown up. Though Ken never used to follow Ace for adventures, there was always deep friendship Ace had for Ken. Among everyone, it was only Ken who treated him as an equal, even after knowing that he was the son of Roger. And for that Ace was very thankful and grateful to Ken, 
though it irritated him that Ken never used to follow him for adventures in the jungle. One fine night, there was a huge party in the house with bottles of sake and wine being brought. Apparently, the bandits raided some pirates from the shore and made a splash. Everyone was drunk and having a good time. One thing led to another, and Dadan started complaining. He is the son of the devil. You know what will happen once people comes to know that he is the son of Roger. Ken and Ace were both present nearby. Ken was helping the people drink and was serving drinks while also sneaking sips from the wine which he was distributing. It was the only way he could enjoy some wine, as Dadan had said that Ace and Ken would never be allowed to drink until they were grown up. Ace was hiding in another room as he heard what Dadan was saying. Ken too stopped on the tracks when he heard those words of Dadan. Dadan had never spoken of Ace in that way, and this was the first. Maybe it was the frustration that Ace brought with his menace and the fact that she was drunk, but those words were hurtful. Especially Ken, he knew that those words were not something she meant, and it was just the wine speaking, but it was still bad. Chapter 9. Lecture Ken didn't waste a second more and directly went to Dadan and snatched the wine bottle from her hands. If it was any other person, Ken would have beaten the shit out of the person, but Dadan was different. She literally brought him up in this world, and he wasn't cruel enough to retaliate in a bad way. Oi, kid, do you know what you are doing? Dadan flared up seeing that a kid had snatched her wine bottle but didn't charge at Ken. You should look at yourself and then speak. Ken said using perfect Japanese. His baby brain had helped him a lot to learn the language, and now he could speak in perfect accent and fluency. What? Did I say something wrong? He is the son of Roger. It was because of him that the great era of pirates had started. And for Roger, people suffer all around the world. Dadan argued even in that drunk state. She was hardly able to open her eyes, and the two bandit subordinates, Dagra and Magra, were trying to calm her down. Both of them were surprisingly sober. Have you traveled the world? Have you traveled to all the seas to know if it was the work of the pirate king that started the great era of pirates? Don't judge just because you stay in a rather secured island of dawn, ruled by a kingdom that is under the world government. This world was much more rotten to the core long before Roger started it. You just didn't notice. Ken replied in a calm but chilling tone. Kid, what do you know? You don't even step out of the house and you speak like you have traveled the world. T might not have traveled, but I sure as hell know that a son or a daughter must not be accused of the sins his father or mother did in the past. The children know no such things and they are innocent. My parents left me here. It is their loss and fault. But that doesn't make me a person who will one day repeat the things that my father did. So shut up your mouth if you don't know what you are speaking. Alcohol and wine doesn't give you the license to speak ill words against others. Ken said, and then proceeded to throw away the wind bottle out of the window with a simple swing. The other bandits also became silent and hung their heads in shame. Today a kid, who was less than half their age, taught them a lesson with just a few words. The kid didn't even shy away from his own history and spoke those words with much clarity. Ken had been the model person of the house at such a young age, and today he showed why he was considered as the best person of the house. Dayton too shut her mouth and somehow was a little sober after Ken spoke those words. She too hung her head. Dagra and Magra lifted her up and took her to the room where she could sleep. Ken proceeded to clean the place alone with the broom. Ace had tears in his eyes looking at it. He always saw Ken as his brother, and his brother helped him in such a way that he would remember his entire life. After the bandits left and Ken was alone, he said you can wipe the tears in your eyes and come out. Nobody is here. After a few seconds of pause, Ace came out with a proper face and said, Who the hell was crying? I just wanted to see how these people think of me, and they prove that they have no love for me and I tell you again, I wasn't crying. He had a straight face and was trying his best to show his tough face. Dadan doesn't really think that from her heart. She was just frustrated for a bit. She still believes in you and loves you. It's just sometimes people make mistakes and say things that they shouldn't say. Ken switched on to the lecture mode here. 
he needed to make sure that Ace wasn't drowned in hatred for his legendary father all his life. Ch, she and feelings for me, I don't need them. Ace said, but Ken could understand that Ace too had good feelings for her. Ken just smiled and didn't say anything. He would let nature take its course, and he had already achieved what he wanted, and that was being close to Ace. Ace later joined in cleaning the room for the first time, seeing Ken doing this single-handedly. Ken, you should come we, the me. I have made a new friend in Grey Terminal, named Sabo. He was brought up in Grey Terminal. He wears a weird hat, but he is Annie's person. I am sure you will like him. Ken's eyes shined when Ace spoke of Sabo. It meant the tale of three brothers had already started, and he needed to wait a little more time. It's fine, Ace. Maybe I will join you someday, but as you can see that the house needs a person to look after, and these bandits aren't fit for that. I don't want to live in a dirty environment. Fine, but you should come with me someday, or else you will be weak and people will take advantage of you. Ken gave a smirk to that and nodded his head. All the time he had been here, Ken had been hiding himself. All these years, he never showed his prowess. When Garp came to visit after Ken got his Thor powers, he could tell Tat something was wrong with Ken, but didn't point it out to him. He just looked at Ken deeply for a few seconds, before turning back to the funny and laughing Garp as always. Ken actually got scared when Garp gave him the look at that time. Grandpa really has a high level of hockey. Just by looking at me, he could tell that something was wrong. Chapter 10. Luffy The next day, nobody spoke of the things that had happened the night before and the very less time that Ace was in the house, everyone treated him a little differently. There were no bad eyes among the bandits as they looked or interacted with him. From this day on, Ace was officially accepted by everyone, and not just Dodden, Dogra, and Magra. Ken was happy to see this, and just continued with his life. He had been growing impatient for some time now. He didn't have his mobile, nor any forms of music to soothe his ears, and no daily necessities that he was used to in his previous life. All he could do was sneak away sometimes with his umbrella and have some fun around. Ken even tried flying with his umbrella and was so happy that he could feel the air rushing by his face when he went high up in the air. Flying came naturally to him. He had even tried his power with the legendary Tiger of the Island. With just one swing of his hammer, he knocked the tiger a few meters back. He was ecstatic. Though he knew that his 100% power of Thor wouldn't be enough to rule this world, dealing with things in the East Blue would be a walk in the park. It is the grand line that he needed to look out for. That is where Ken hoped to get a character that would allow him to be powerful, and of course learn hockey before New World. His advanced physique still didn't allow him to use hockey in any form. At the beginning, Ken thought that he would be able to learn at least observation or Kenbunshoku hockey like Kobe did during the war. But he wasn't lucky enough. T need to find Naguri and ask him to teach me. At least the initial form would be enough and work on this overtime. This was his plan for the time being. The days went by as usual, and finally the day that he had been looking forward to had arrived. Garp had returned, and this time he had brought a small kid with himself. Garp was holding the kid by his collar, and this small kid was hanging from the hands of Grandpa like someone who was made of rubber. It looked weird, but only Ken who just came out of the house had a smile on his face. Dadan and others also came out hearing all the commotions. Dadan as usual had started complaining about the problems Ace had brought in her life, but Luffy, who had just escaped the clutches of Garp, had started running around. Seeing the kid annoyed, Dada more and screamed, Who is this annoying kid? This is Luffy. Take care of him too. Oi, Luffy, say hi. Luffy raised his hand and said, Yo. Ken, who had silently stood near Dada and saw the iconic scene, had a smile on his face. From the looks of it, Luffy had eaten the Gomu. Gomu no Mior, as the legends call it. Hito, Hito no Mi model Nika. This meant that the story was on the right track and he just needed to wait a little more before the adventure started. Welcome home, joy boy. Ken murmured under his breath. Ken was waiting for a perfect time to enter into the ranks of three brothers and he already had a perfect scene in his mind. 
All these years he had been thinking of ways to enter the Brotherhood, and his memories had already helped him in carving out a way. After that, Luffy was spat upon by Ace, and thus the famous running after Ace started. Ken was beaming with joy looking at this. He was right not to intervene in this regard. Garp stayed with them for a few days before leaving while Luffy noticed Ken. Yo, I am Luffy. It's nice to meet you. Let's be friends. Tam Ken, nice to meet you too, and sure we can be friends. Ken said. He knew that Luffy was interested in him, but Luffy's inherent hatred for bandits didn't allow him to be with Ken for a long time. Luffy recently had a huge interaction with bandits, and so seeing Ken being with bandits didn't go down well with him. Luffy didn't hate Ken, but seeing that Ken was almost of his age, he approached him. Here he didn't have any friends, and only Ken could be his friend, as Ace just leaves the first time in the morning. Garp, seeing all of this, just smiled and didn't stop these small shenanigans of his three grandsons. After, our Garp left, Luffy tried interacting with Ace, but he was silent and just left early in the morning. And Luffy too followed him like an idiot. Ken sighed. It was time to step his foot into the world and control destiny in his own hands. After Luffy went away after Ace the first day, he said to Dadden in a hushed tone, T will be going out like Ace and Luffy. It is time that I too go out and see the world with my own eyes. Eh, why? Who will clean the home if you leave? You are the only good kid in the house. Don't make things more difficult. Dadan said in a straight face, trying to establish dominance, though she was happy from inside. Ken had been a homeboy for far too long, and he needed to see the world like Ace had, but it was true she would have a headache cleaning and cooking. Ken had been helping her for such a long time that she had forgotten a life without Ken. You can take care of that yourself. Ken didn't care about the thoughts of Dadan. Sigh! Go, go! Live your life! Dadan said. Ken just smiled at it. After seeing Luffy and Ace vanishing, Ken took his umbrella and stepped out of the house. He would follow Luffy and Ace, but from far, and would make sure that nothing extreme happens to Luffy.